Welcome to the Airgun Show. You asked for affordable PCPs, so this week we've got the Cometa Orion SPR on test. But before that, I'm out ratting before and after dark with the ATN X Site 2. Well, if you hadn't noticed already, we're out ratting on the farm this evening. I wasn't actually expecting to see them by daylight, hence I've got the NV set up with me, but there have been a few running around and we've been making the most of it. I actually thought that last one was going to run up my trouser leg. I was just about to stamp my feet, but fortunately it turned back, headed out about 12 metres away, knocked it over with the first shot, quick follow-up shot, second rat in the bag already. Right, well it does seem to have gone a bit quiet now, so I'll just take a moment to talk you through the kit I'm using tonight. Now the day and night scope is the ATN X Sight 2. Now this scope is absolutely packed with fantastic features, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, gives you a choice of reticle colours and designs, and most importantly of all, it's really simple to use. You've got a focusing dial at the back that keeps the reticle absolutely pin sharp, and the focusing dial at the front is what you use to focus in on your target at whatever range that appears at. So once you're up and running, it's very simple to use. The control panel on the top of the unit enables you to scroll through the various menus that drop down from the carousel display, which you see as you look through the scope once you enter that mode. But to be honest with you, you would set most of that up on the range. In the field, you only need to use very simple controls. The forward and backward buttons operate the zoom and you've got a zoom range of between 5 and 20 times. Now, 20 times is probably brilliant for long range sniping off a bipod, but to be honest with you, when you're ratting at relatively close range like this, I wouldn't use more than about 6 times because I want that wide field of view for picking up the, the target quickly. Now, the other buttons, the left and right buttons, they should make life a lot easier for me because they give you instant recording. The right button records video and the left button shoots still images which is so much easier than the trailing wires that I've grown accustomed to when trying to film through night vision units. I've coupled the x 2 with the Tracer LED Ray IR Illuminator. Now it's got three power settings. Best of all, it's nice and compact so it doesn't make the unit feel too side heavy. And to be perfectly honest this evening, I'm probably going to be using it on the lowest power setting because we're shooting at relatively close range and that will also help me to extend the battery life. And the gun I've got it set up on is the Brocock Compatto. Now the x sight has a Picatinny mount which means I've had to use an adapter on top of the intermount on the Compatto. 
Now there is a small snag with that in the fact that because it's a bit higher, the line of sight is quite away above the bore of the barrel. And that means I'm gonna to have to use quite a lot of hold under and hold over at various ranges, probably mostly hold over at the close range tonight. But fortunately, because the x Sight 2 is also a day scope, I've been able to get plenty of practice in on the range and I know where my aim points are at various ranges. Right, well after all that talk, I very much doubt that we're gonna see any more rats here, so we'll move on and try somewhere else. Also, it's starting to get dark now, so we'll move over to night vision and put the Excite through its paces. Right, it's properly dark now, so we've gone onto the night vision camera. I'm going to set up here and give it a try. It's usually worth a few rats. There's a container at this end, but just beyond that is a narrow alleyway between two buildings, one of which is used to store animal feed. And a lot of feed tends to spill out into that alleyway, and the rats know it's quite a sheltered place to venture out and feed. So we'll dig in here and give it a go. With less rats on the farm than there were during the winter, I'm expecting to have to be very patient tonight. If there's going to be a long wait, I want to be comfy. So I've brought along my fold-up stool, which should help to prevent me from getting uncomfortable and impatient. I'm also setting up a rest for the gun. Even when shooting at close range like this, it's something I like to take advantage of if I can, and a great way to ensure that every shot counts. You'll notice a lot of light from the infrared illuminator, but that's because we're filming with a night vision camera. It can't be seen with the naked eye, so the rats should be oblivious to it when we're shining on them. And, just to prove the stealth of my night vision setup, the first after dark rat continues to feed as I settle the crosshairs. Didn't have to wait very long for that one. That one was very close, probably not much more than 10 meters, so I had to give the shot quite a lot of hold over, but it was a good kill. I continue scanning through the Excite 2, and a pair of rats soon venture out to scavenge on the spilt feed. in fairly quick succession there. It really does show the benefit of using night vision gear. I don't think that second one would have hung around if I'd been shining a lamp down there. This night hunting combo is certainly delivering the goods and it's turning out to be quite a productive session on the farm. Well, it looked like that one was going to die in the wall, but it did eventually flop out. Now there were two rats there when I took the shot, so I think there's still some action to be had from this spot. The spilt cattle feed is proving to be a real draw tonight and another rat soon ventures out for a munch. Oh, that one was really stuffing its face. In fact, there's very little point 
in putting down bait spots of your own in a situation like this because there's just so much grub here that the rats probably wouldn't pay any attention to it. I had a feeling we'd get another one from the wall and I reckon that may well have been the one that was in the background when I shot the first one from there. Right, well it's gone quiet now so I'm going to call it a night. There aren't actually a lot of rats on the farm at the moment so I think we've done very well to pick a spot, settle down here and actually make quite a decent little tally. It's been quite an enjoyable session and the ATN X Site 2 has given a really good account of itself. Right, let's get a few of these rats picked up. A few more rats than expected there, thanks no date to the stealthy night vision approach. And now, it's the air gun show news. This is the air gun show news. Brought to you by the air gun centre. Scottish Government website suggests police will need to visit a premises before issuing a license for plinking or informal target shooting with an air gun. Basque believes the move would place an unnecessary burden on the time and resources of police licensing officers who are already under pressure. Basque Scotland director Dr Colin Shedden said it was wholly disproportionate that officers must now visit a person's garden to give the all clear to allow shooting at a target with an air rifle. This is the new Seek Reveal handheld thermal imaging unit unveiled on the new Scott Country stand at the recent Northern Shooting Show. The reveal allows hunters to detect heat sources from their quarry in deep cover and after dark at ranges of up to 225 meters. It has a price tag of just £419.99, yet still boasts features including full color thermal imaging, smooth refresh and onboard image capture. The countdown is on for the UK Game Fair taking place at Stoney on the 22nd to the 24th of July. It's just 10 weeks until the countryside's new flagship event, replacing the now defunct CLA Game Fair. The Gun Quarter will be the retail experience many felt was lacking at previous game fairs. With big brands such as BSA, Gamo, Umarex, the shooting parties, Forofsky and Deer Hunter in attendance. And if you want to go shooting for yourself at the fair, head to the air gun line run by the ATEO. There'll be air guns there to try before you buy from all the major manufacturers. And finally, Air Arms Junior Ambassador Abby Warren battled through challenging conditions to win the 2016 English Sporter Championship at the National Shooting Centre in Bisley earlier this month. Abby took a few poor shots, no thanks to the roller skaters in the adjacent room making it almost impossible to hold a steady aim. But the crew RPC shooter held her nerve to top the competition with her Air Arms S400 MPR and add another title to her credits. That was the Egg and Show News. This week's review gun is the Kometa Orion SPR. Manufactured in Spain, this multi-shot PCP costs just £399. Despite its modest price, it's a handsome gun with some impressive features and it feels very well built. So let's take a closer look and see what it's got to offer. The ambidextrous wooden stock has some really nice graining and is also fitted with QD studs so it's ready for you to fit a sling or bipod without having to reach for the drill. The woodwork also features panels of checkering on the forend and on the pistol grip. The checkering is tidy, situated in the right place and certainly helps to improve grip. The forend is very long, so you certainly won't struggle to find somewhere to put your leading hand, whatever hold you prefer to use. 
And while the pistol grip could probably benefit from a slightly steeper rake, it still feels comfortable and gives you good trigger attack. One thing I really like about the stock is the adjustable cheek piece, which you can move up and down and then lock in exactly the right place to give perfect alignment between your eye and the scope. The Orion SPR weighs a very manageable 3.5 kilos unscoped. It's an adult sized air gun, but still measures a relatively compact 103 centimeters with the supplied moderator fitted. It's very well balanced and feels great in the shoulder, which is testament to the design of the ambidextrous handle. The finish of the metalwork is very tidy, especially considering this air gun's price point, and the length of the scope rails gives you plenty of clamping options when it comes to mounting up. The cold hammer forged barrel is made in Komita's own factory, and apart from looking the business, the chunky tapered silencer on the end of it does a great job of muting the muzzle blast. To fill the Orion, simply push the cover off the front of the cylinder and couple up to the inlet. A 200 bar fill gives more than 150 consistent shots at close to the UK legal limit. And it's easy to see when it needs topping up because there's a clearly marked pressure gauge on the underside of the stock. The 2.2 caliber Orion is equipped with a 13 shot magazine. You load it up with the clear plate facing away from you, loading pellets tail end first, turning the cover clockwise to open up another chamber and gradually tensioning the spring. When it's fully loaded, you turn the cover back to its original position and it's ready to go. The clear casing at the back of the magazine means you can keep an eye on how many pellets you've got left. The mag is cycled by a rear bolt action, which also cocks the gun and probes the pellet into the breech. It's a very sturdy mechanism, but it's also very smooth, and it worked without any hiccups during our testing. There's a manual safety catch situated just in front of the trigger. You pull it back to make the gun safe, and then push it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. It's very positive and works very well, but it's just a bit too close to the trigger for my liking. And that trigger mechanism is a very impressive adjustable two-stage unit that certainly wouldn't feel out of place on an air gun costing much more than this one. The blade is a little bit more curved than I would usually like, but I have to admit that it feels very comfortable. Straight from the box, the first stage is a bit short, but the second stage is crisp with a very predictable break point so I was happy to leave it as it was. That's the Comita Orion SPR's main attributes, so let's let it loose on the range and see what it's capable of. I'm certainly impressed with that. We're lucky to have a fairly calm day today and the Orion's enabled me to take advantage of those conditions and it's turned out a very tight clover leaf group at 25 metres. Now, that sort of accuracy tells me that this gun's going to be up to pretty serious hunting assignments, although it really does fall within the plinking gun price bracket. The Comita Orion SPR really has exceeded my expectations. For under £400 you get a multi-shot PCP with some great features and no obvious skimping on quality. It looks good, feels good and shoots really well. And it's quiet. It may be classed as an affordable air gun, but it's certainly built for proper field work. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.